in this anointing, I can get him to come and visit you. Him who? Him, the Holy Ghost, who's God in the earth today. If you listen and you hear with the ear of your spirit, I can get him in this message to come and visit you. What do you suppose it'll be like when he visits you? You'll be changed. Holy Ghost is God Holy in the earth God today the earth and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrott and I thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure that you like and subscribe and if this isn't your first time here then this message is for you because we're gonna be talking about the power of partnership and there's more available to you if you can hear it there's more available to you in the spirit if you learn how to hook up and go on say hook up and go, and go on there's more there than if you could than just you being by yourself God didn't put people in the body of Christ like myself just to be here and just to entertain you we're here to take you somewhere and if you'll listen with the ears of your spirit I can take you there we're gonna be talking about the power of partnership ministry association and anointing well first of all do those things exist is there a thing such a thing called partnership in the Bible mm -hmm. partnering with ministries we're gonna get into some of that is there such a thing as a ministry in the Bible yes. you, could you have something to do with that yeah okay what about association is there anything about associating is there anything like that in the Bible yes. so I'm not preaching extra Bible meaning outside of the Bible I'm preaching straight into it is there anything called the anointing yes. and all of those things say all of those things all of I can, I can associate, associate with and partake, of. and partake of but God has a way to do it we're gonna talk about that this evening isn't that good yes. see because you can go farther with an anointing than you can by yourself mm -hmm. that should be basics you understand yes. so Philippians chapter 1 Philippians chapter 1 verse 7 even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel say the defense, defense. and confirmation, confirmation of the gospel. the gospel what do you think that's all about that's ministry mm -hmm. you understand that's what Paul is doing here and he's saying I have you in my heart concerning this ministry that he's involved with right and we know that further on as you go into the the book of Philippians these people were, were big supporters of Paul in fact sometimes say sometimes, sometimes. they were the only supporters of Paul mm -hmm. how would you like that to go down on your account there were times when I was the only supporter of that ministry Paul for goodness sakes yeah. you think the Philippians are skipping around heaven going "Woo, that was a good investment I wished I could have invested in Paul at that time right mm -hmm. in the defense and confirmation of the gospel you all are partakers of my grace now this word partakers we can understand we understand I like the King James but other translations the NIV for instance says partners and many other translations say partners that's literally what it means so but so a partner is some say this a partner, a partner. is someone, someone who partakes, who partakes of, the grace of the grace of that ministry you understand mm -hmm. partners literally other versions say share they share in this grace can we understand that mm -hmm. say I share in the grace, I share in the grace. right so that if there's a grace on a ministry that you're attached to or you're listening to or you're giving to or a partner with mm -hmm. you are a sharer mm -hmm. a partaker of the grace that's on that ministry that's right. this is God's method we're gonna be talking about it right because being a partner with that grace can take you farther than you could go just by yourself are you here yes. The problem is we especially now online we got so many people that are just lone rangers lone rangers they'll eat a little bit here eat a little bit a little bit there eat a little bit there and all that's all very nice and good but you're never going to get as far 
as if you learn how to partner up with a grace and an anointing on a ministry first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 but by the grace of God I am what I am this is Paul writing to the Corinthians and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was given unto me or the grace of God which was with me grace for ministry and he labored according to it read on verse 11 wherefore whether it were I or they so we preach and so you believed they preached and you believed what do you suppose the grace was all about preaching and believing so when when someone pre I hope you can get this when someone preaches the gospel there's a grace that goes out of his words onto the people that hear it mm -hmm. that causes them to be able to believe yes. right God gives people messages that they can come and say to you that's part of the grace exchange mm -hmm. say grace exchange. grace exchange and when you can learn how to partner up with that you can have more of it on you does this make sense yes. so there's levels of belief and most of what we do as preachers is trying to get people into belief so this is how God gets his grace across it's the grace is on the preacher and then the preaching comes and they believe it and then there's also the the partaking of it which we just talked about in Philippians 1 7 partnering with that grace so you're gonna hear the preaching you're gonna believe it and then you're gonna partner with it well I'm gonna say some things a lot of people won't like and I'm gonna say a lot of things in a way that a lot of other people won't like but if you can hear it you can partner with it they partner with it partner what are you partnering with the grace the anointing the thing that you're hearing right yeah. and I'm anointed for it Luke chapter 4 verse 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted recovering of sight to the blind set at liberty them that are bruised and to what preach the acceptable year of the Lord what was Jesus anointed to do preach the grace was on him to preach and when he preached and they believed they were able to partake of the thing that he was preaching on yes. you get this mm -hmm. and part of what he was preaching on was that he was anointed mm -hmm. people don't like that when you say you're anointed what are you gonna do what was Jesus gonna do oh they're not gonna like it if I say I'm anointed but if he didn't say he was anointed they couldn't believe that mm -hmm. you understand yes. so here's Jesus and I find it curious look down at verse 21 and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears now listen remember he said oh he's gonna preach the gospel to the poor heal the brokenhearted preach deliverance recovering of sight set at liberty all of those things right yeah. and he said it was fulfilled yeah. where was it fulfilled in their ears he brought the anointing are you here yeah. and the grace came to their ears now how many times did he go around and say he that has ears to hear let him hear mm -hmm. those who were able to hear and believe were healed mm -hmm. Luke 4 32 and they were all astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power it wasn't like the scribes he didn't just teach say he didn't he didn't just teach, didn't just teach. Like, the like the scribes he taught as one who had authority that's the way that word is also translated they were astonished because he said I'm anointed mm -hmm. none of the scribes would say that right. you understand that was what he was saying they were astonished because he was saying that he was anointed for that specific message and it really bothered them mm -hmm. well I'm anointed for a specific message whether you like it or not but if you can hear it you can go there if you don't hear it or you can't hear it or you don't like me for whatever reason it is then you won't be able to go there but wherever this message I'm delivering this evening goes it will take you there what will the grace that's on the message the anointing that's on the message 
and it'll place take you someplace different say someplace different. someplace different now I don't know how long you've been here how long you've been on this channel if you're on online but I'm not saying what everybody else is saying have you heard that I'm not saying what everybody else is saying if you think I am then you'd be wrong you haven't heard yet I'm not saying something that's you know outside of the Bible but I'm saying something that's not being said how are you gonna go somewhere in the anointing if you're not gonna hear something that you haven't heard before when I say listen when I say that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words you could probably glean that somewhere out of many other people's doctrine but nobody's refined it down to that and stuck their thumb in it mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. yes. but that's where we're at who's God in the earth today the Holy Ghost who do you walk with when you wake up in the morning the Holy Ghost should you worship the Holy Ghost yes. he's God yes other places are not saying that but there's an anointing on that message and if you hear it you can go where that message is taking you and I'm telling you it's not taking you where everybody else is taking you I don't like this message eh. so I'm not saying what everybody else is saying but if this rings true to your ears and you can hear it it will take you there if this rings true God may be calling you out and up to a higher level of belief you suppose that's possible yes. Yes. how's he gonna do it how's God gonna take you out and up to another to a higher level of belief by preaching and hearing right it's the way he did how did Jesus get them out of that level of belief although they didn't want any anything to do with it so if this rings true to your ears you can hear it God is calling you out and up to a higher level of belief some of us are going on we know it to be true I found it to be true I found great benefit in using the words I worship you Holy Ghost and knowing that he is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today and that Jesus is in heaven and he is returning mm -hmm. nothing I said is out of out of script or is not scriptural some of us are going on some of you are going back do you remember the the parable of the ten virgins five of them went back didn't they they weren't going on there's no going back were they in trouble when they went back yes. yeah because they went back mm -hmm. well there's no going back there's only a crossing over I hope you can hear this there's only a crossing over a new dimension of belief say a new dimension, a new dimension. of belief do you have an idea that there might be one there a new dimension of belief yes a new reality to live in if you've been here long enough you should be living in a new reality that you weren't living in before I live in the new reality and that it's me and the Holy Ghost when I wake up in the morning so there is an anointing here there is a call here that you can partake of if you can hear a partnership isn't just about money and I know that a lot of people just turned off automatically simply because you mentioned the word partnership but partnership does involve money partnership means to partner up with the with the grace and the anointing on that ministry gift that will take you somewhere but there's a lot more to it it's not just about money although money is involved say money is involved, money is involved. it's about being a part of and joining up with something significant so God gives people messages those people become messengers this isn't too difficult is it no. well this ministry has a message did you know that yes. it is next level anointed the message itself is next level anointed what do you mean next level anointed because I'm telling you I listen to preaching and I have listened to preaching and I came up in the word of faith with some of the best in my opinion best instruction and best education and under the best people in the word of faith mm -hmm. not once have I heard them say use the words I worship you Holy Ghost because this is something I didn't get from that and it doesn't mean I'm not preaching those things but this is not something I didn't that I got from them it's something I got from heaven 
when I say the words I worship you Holy Ghost or I preach on those things that the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today you walk with him by saying words mm -hmm. it's next level and that anointing I'm telling you I hear it all the time that people hear the anointing and they don't know what to do with it just like with Jesus there when he said this thing you know, they had never heard anything like that before did they it went into their ears and it like electrified them they were like ah what is that we must shut it down find a cliff throw it off but I'll go and I'll listen to people that I know are anointed say I know are anointed, I know are anointed. and then I'll go and I'll listen to one of my, my messages that I've preached on this specific topic doing the best that I can to follow the same Holy Ghost you understand and there's a different anointing on it there's a different sound to it it's next level well where's it gonna take us to the next level you think I'm irritating enough people yet I'm gonna keep going the same anointing that's on me I hope you can hear this the same anointing that's on me comes on all of my partners and takes them there and if you heard it that anointing that something and God may be calling you to partnership partnership is for your good Philippians 4 17 says that Paul here was saying I don't desire partnership from you for your goods and your money I desire it so that fruit can abound to your account That's right. all oh, you're in it you're just talking about partnership for the money well money is a part of it but my needs are met regardless That's right. if you've been out there listening the thousands of people that haven't haven't sent a, a single dime in how do I exist then if I was only in it for the money my needs are met regardless so it's not about me getting your money it's about you being able to partner up and have that anointing come on you and take you someplace you couldn't get without it not that I desire a gift that's Philippians 4 17 but I desire fruit to abound to your account let's go to second Corinthians you probably know where I'm going here second Corinthians chapter 9 let's go uh, let's read verse 6 but this I say he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully is that in your Bible yes. hmm is that true or you just want to say that you know that's the only just prosperity preachers preach on that no, you know why prosperity preachers preach on that because they believe it and 90% of them use it in their daily walk with God every man according as he purposes in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver mm -hmm. now having said all of that we're gonna say verse 8 mm -hmm. say having said all of that, said all of that we're gonna say verse 8 we're gonna say verse see eight. so verse 8 comes in the context of all of that yes. and God the same God that we were just right are we talking about a different God than the one we were talking about the verse before the same one the one that loves a cheerful giver right and God is able to make all what grace, grace abound towards you that so the, the result of this grace more grace say more grace more grace. more grace abounding towards you the result of that will be that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work yes. you're like oh I need an answer I need a financial answer you think people need financial answers yes. mm -hmm. I think we all do from time to time right yes. what's God's answer more grace if you had all grace abounding towards you so you always having all sufficiency in all things abound to every good work mm -hmm. seems like you got it pretty much figured out don't you That's right. well we were just talking about the grace that was on ministry gifts there's a grace that's on a ministry gift that isn't on you are you here mm -hmm. and God is going to use that grace to make all things abound towards you so wouldn't it be beneficial to partner or to get hooked up with the grace that's on that ministry gift mm -hmm. his method is to get more grace to you 
well we already started this knowing that you know there's graces on ministry gifts right yes. so the object is to get that grace that's on that ministry gift into your ears and into your life mm -hmm. one way for that to happen is through partnering with that ministry gift so this is if this is something you need something you desire something you want then you need to partner with somebody say partner with somebody. partner with somebody partnering with somebody who has an anointing that's going somewhere but needless to say partnership is beneficial to you you see the context of those verses of scripture was God trying to get grace over to you right a lot of people bring up the word partnership and they go I never thought about it never even crossed their mind you know I go what do you mean oh well, you should you know sow into a ministry and become part part nerp means becoming part of that to partner with somebody you become part of that say part, part. of oh. that then you're partaking part again you're partaking of that mm -hmm. it becomes part of you you become part of it never crossed their mind that they should even think about that mm -hmm. well I'm gonna show you a little something here first Kings chapter 17 you know I'm just gonna read from verse 1 is that okay mm -hmm. why not get the whole story here mm -hmm. and Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word pretty strong stuff huh mm -hmm. yeah. verse 2 and the word of the Lord came unto him saying get thee hence turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan mm -hmm. and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there mm -hmm. say there. there what if he didn't go there mm, he'd be missing it right verse 5 so he went and did according to the word of the Lord glory to God mm -hmm. and he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook and while it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land you see what's happening here mm -hmm. that's called a drought in those days big bad news people would be dying people's food stores would be running out mm -hmm. verse 8 and the word of the Lord came unto him saying arise get thee to Zarephath which belongs to Zidon and dwell there behold I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee now we're gonna get up here a little bit farther and you know you would think that that widow woman was completely ignorant that this was happening mm -hmm. God has already commanded a widow woman to sustain him mm -hmm. and she didn't know it mm -hmm. so people when they sit there and they go I'd never thought about it I never thought about partnership you may it may never have dawned on your mind but it doesn't mean that the Spirit of God hasn't been leading you in that direction That's right. say he's leading me, he's leading me in, that in that direction now if we look here verse 10 so he arose and went to Zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city behold a widow woman was there gathering sticks and he called to her and said fetch me I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink and as she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me I pray thee a morsel of bread in thine hand and she said I never thought about it and she said as the Lord thy God lives I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise and behold I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son that we may eat it and die well there you go uh -huh. Elijah said unto her fear not go and do as thou hast said but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it to me and after make thee for thee and for thy son you know how many people would have been really upset about this uh -huh. yeah. here's a prophet 
prophesying no you you go and take some of the little bit that you have and bring it to me mm -hmm. now let me ask you a question who who had to bring this up to the widow woman was Elijah just strutting down the road and then uh, this widow woman came up and said excuse me mr. man of God the Lord has spoken to me and I want to take care of you is that how it happened is that how it went down how'd it go down the man of God had to say something first yeah. are you here and if we got a lot of people ministers in the body of Christ who don't want to bring it up What's going to happen to all those widow women they're not going to have what ha we know what happens here right they ate on it for many days what came on the widow woman the grace, the grace that was on elijah to make it through that famine right. if he didn't bring it up and suggest that she become a partner with him mm -hmm. then that grace wouldn't have come on her and she wouldn't have made it through that's right are you here God's method is to have grace come on you and provide what 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 actually happened in that barrel full of meal grace mm -hmm. the same grace say the same grace, the same that, grace. grace. that was on Elijah right yes. Yes. came on her mm -hmm. when she gave if, even if it was just a little bit mm -hmm. he didn't say you're gonna bring it all did he mm -hmm. so bring it first the prophet or the ministry gift had to say something first he had to bring it up a lot of people just don't get it they don't understand well that's why I'm preaching on this yeah. so people get it so they can have the grace that's on me that's on this ministry that's on this message come on them and do something for them that they couldn't have without it mm -hmm. are you here it's part of the plan I've never really been comfortable with it I don't know that any preacher that's a legitimate preacher is they're not they're not out for the money if they're a real preacher they're out to serve God and do what he was Elijah out to get money no, no he was obeying God mm -hmm. but it's part of the process it's part of the plan if God tells you to go and tell a widow, widow woman that she needs to give to you in order to have his anointing come on her and provide for her then what are you gonna do about it you're gonna either say it and be criticized most likely right now oh, you're in it for the money no I'm in it for the anointing I'm in it for the anointing to get on you that's what Paul was saying I'm not in it so, so that I can I'm desiring a gift I'm desiring that fruit abounds to your account mm -hmm. Is this making sense yes. it's not about asking for money it's about giving people the opportunity to partake partner with be a part of an anointing that's significant mm -hmm. and doing something in the earth mm -hmm. well there is an anointing here now nah, I don't like that then I'll say it again there is an anointing here and it's an anointing that will take you somewhere that you can't get without it okay. Luke chapter 8 oh yeah this is good stuff Luke chapter 8 verse 1 and it came to pass afterward that he Jesus went through every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him let me ask you a question mm -hmm. does it take money to go from city to city and village to village with 12 hungry guys Yes. would they have been a fan if he said we're just gonna fast <laughs> no. day after day after day that's not how it works they went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the king what what about today it's different today today you can do it without any money are you kidding me no. you want to go from one village to the next village and you want to take a, a bunch of people with you it's going to cost you some money mm -hmm. you can either, either do it for less or for more but it will cost you something mm -hmm. are you here yes and the twelve were with him verse 2 and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils verse 3 and Joanna the wife of Chusa Herod's steward and Susanna and many others say many others, many others. which ministered unto him of their substance how did Jesus make it 
How do, why do, well, he, he's Jesus. He doesn't need no substances. These were wealthy women, and they were giving to him of their substance. And to me, that's very important. I hope you can hear this. Of their substance means of themselves. They gave of themselves. It just happened to be in a monetary capacity. And many others, I, I look up a lot of these words, it also means many, meaning many times. Say many times. Many times. It wasn't just a one-time thing. It was many times times this was going on a lot these people were Jesus's main supporters in order to expand say expand. expand in order to expand a message or a ministry or promote it or to get it farther say get it farther, get it farther. to have a farther outreach what's it gonna take you must have more income if you want to get on some other kind of media it takes money mm -hmm. it takes different camera equipment takes lighting equipment all of these things any expansion are you here any expansion takes an expansion of income mm -hmm. so it takes money to travel from town to town it takes money to open up a new market mm -hmm. new equipment so in order to increase it takes increase well I've got news for you God is the God of increase That's right. Amen. why do you suppose he's the God of increase because he wants his message increased That's right. one of his ways of increasing mm -hmm. is to have partners come in and then as they partner with the anointing and the grace on that ministry they increase mm -hmm. the widow woman increased from having a little bit to having more than enough Say, I will increase, I will increase. From, having from having a little bit to having more than enough. More than enough. Yeah. How does that happen? By the grace that comes on you. More people, more communities means more increase. Proverbs 14, verse 4 says, Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. You can plow more fields with an ox. Are you here? Yes. You get this? I love that verse of scripture. You want much increase, you're going to have to have bigger stuff. And bigger things are more expensive. You ever try to feed an ox? Mm -hmm. You ever been in the farming business? Those animals eat. Mm -hmm. I ask you to join me in this increase. It increases me, but it will increase you by the power of the Spirit of God. And there is a lot of increase coming I hope you can hear it there is a lot of increase coming there is a lot of increase coming God's speaking that to people right now this message as you know I share it here often this message is literally going all over the world in countries all over the world people are using the words I worship you Holy Ghost you think God is happy with that yes. it's gonna increase this is just the beginning mm -hmm. we're only getting started people in China Africa India Russia Brazil I just looked up a few of these things as well as the United States all over the United States all over Canada Amen. all over the UK but literally all over the world people are beginning say beginning. beginning they're beginning to worship the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today and walk with him by saying words it's only the early stages the beginning of any innovation any new thing that was happening they're called early adopters mm -hmm. and those early adopters listen are the ones who get the biggest rise out of what they've adopted into but there's a new thinking there's a new believing and there's a new reality that we as early adopters are beginning to walk in say walk, walk. in yeah. and it's happening it's going all over the world it's just the beginning so what does it mean to be a partner and what does that look like I think I've already been describing a lot of it but I'm gonna try to be as clear as I can partnership begins by hearing the message you have to hear the message first it has to sound different to you in a good way mm -hmm. 
and then you believe it you hear it and you believe it remember we talked about Paul the grace was on him to preach so people would believe yeah. so partnership begins by hearing the message hearing say hearing hearing, hearing the anointing and I am anointed and I'm anointed for this message and this message is anointed mm -hmm. because that's what you're partnering with so after hearing the message they come to a place of belief they come to the place especially here you come to the place of believing that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and that you walk with him in the earth by speaking in agreement with his words all of these things that I preach on over and over you understand you come to that place of belief and well and if you believe that he is God you would you would be the temple of him and you would begin to worship him and you would use the words I worship you Holy Ghost you hear the message you believe the message and you begin to do it you worship the Holy Ghost every day mm -hmm. I'm telling you if you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost on a daily basis it will do something to you it'll literally rewire your thinking into this dispensation so they hear the word they believe the word they do the word mm -hmm. right yep. we're talking about what partners do then they give financially say they give financially, they give financially. partners give financially mm -hmm. there's no set amount some tithe some just send an offering every month either way but they're partnering with that anointing can you hear this yeah. they're partnering with that anointing and it does something for them it takes them somewhere partnership is an opportunity to buy in at the very early stages and become be, become part of something significant in the earth mm -hmm. and if you can hear it you will know that it is a significant thing it is not something that's been contrived by man but it is something that the Spirit of God has saved for these last days and as people will embrace it and begin to use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I will begin to anoint them and change them and cause them to be everything that I've called them to be and there shall nothing be able to stand or stop them from fulfilling the final day call that rests upon them as it does upon many of you so partnership is an opportunity to buy in and become a part of something significant a ministry a message an anointing they partake of the anointing it becomes them have you ever heard that mm -hmm. that becomes you you start walking in it in a grace that you didn't have before glory to God so in this anointing I can get him listen in this anointing I can get him to visit you I said in this anointing I can get him to come and visit you him who him the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today if you listen and you hear with the ear of your spirit I can get him in this message to come and visit you what do you suppose it'll be like when he visits you you'll be changed mm -hmm. if you listen there is a new manifestation of the Spirit coming can you hear it mm -hmm. if you listen there is a new manifestation of the Spirit coming and it's coming for you yeah Woo! it's coming for you so anyway partnership isn't about money although it does involve money you understand that it's about the opportunity to be a part of the anointing that is here in this last day it's on me it's on this ministry it's on this message and you can have that anointing profit you let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people are your worshipers and they're beginning to know you as God in the earth today I ask you to develop and bring forth those gifts and those callings that they may stand strong and be part of this last day army of believers we worship you and give you the glory and praise in Jesus name amen 
say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I thank you that it is your grace that comes on me and on these finances I am a cheerful giver I'm a thankful giver and I thank you for being involved in my bank account and in my finances and in my business and in all my affairs I worship you with this money in Jesus name amen in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth